So, oh, damn it, I wanted to go first. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait half a second. Because I have no idea what I'm going to say for the middle of Good, because that's usually the funniest Son thing. Of a bitch. <laughs> so, what do we have today? Wildlife, Sigma 150 to 600, and the SL1. Let's focus on that. I'm Tom. I'm Ryan. And with us today is Erica. Yay! Yay! We are very happy to have Erica in here. Uh, mostly because she brings us some toys we haven't gotten to play with yet. Mm-hmm. She's got her Canon SL1, which is tiny yeah. as I'm looking camera. at it. But can you tell us a little bit about the SL1? So, so, basically, it's a T5i with a couple less autofocusing points and a lot right. smaller. So yeah. it doesn't have the flip-out screen in the back, which All is right, fine. yeah, that was the other question I had. Was yeah, no, I'm totally cool with that. Um, it is touch screen, that's so that's cool. kind of cool. So you can zoom in and out like you would with an iPhone. I have or to or like there. the 70D. Cool. Yeah, so it's cool. It's perfect with the little 40 millimeter lens. Yeah, it was really, like really small. The pancake on there. Um, what megapixel? Uh, 18. 18. It has the same. It has basically. T5i is 18. Yeah, so it's the yeah. same sensor, just you know, it's lower autofocusing system. But um, other than that, um, I love it. Well, that is actually has a pop-up pop flash, Tom. Oh. Right. Unlike my 60, this is like the perfect size oh, for you a have red eye flash. I don't know. You might have yeah. it. On, I think it's, it's on portrait red, mode. It's yeah, it's on portrait mode. Pre prepulses, which I yeah. Hate. Yeah. So the only thing that I miss about, I have this 6D and I like having the Wi-Fi to transfer my pictures to yep. my phone for whatever reason. Yeah. I don't like that it doesn't have that, but for, you know, an entry level Canon camera, I'm sure not too many people really care about that. You can get yeah. those little Wi-Fi cards, but. A little, yeah. I've, I've looked at getting those before I had my 60. I mean. Like the like, Wi-Fi, yeah. Yeah. They're, I- they're nice. I used one and they sent one to, um my store and we used it but they're unless both. there's like two versions there's one that's going to transfer all your images as you're taking them no matter what yeah and then the next one that's like the next higher price bracket you can like choose which pictures you want to send so that's like a hundred dollars for 16 gigabytes and i'm like yeah i'll pass yeah because at that point i'm just gonna so, go and stick it in the card reader yeah, yeah for me like i i have a hard time with the wi-fi i mean nikon's low wi-fi sucks it, it's it's why you shoot can it works, yeah. So I can put my pictures on my phone without because <laughs> I, like I ever post raw pictures like that. Um, but I mean, it's functional. If I want to trigger the camera, if I want to use get some images off the camera, it's, it usually works. Um, the software is terrible. Is really the thing. I don't mind yeah. having the little pluggy thing. The the Canon, the Nikon's are the yeah. The they, little USB. They call it a dongle. Oh, I love dongles. Um, <laughs> I don't mind that. Like I yeah. don't mind having the little. It's on the table over there. Somewhere. Yeah. It's um, tiny. It's cute. It's sixty dollars. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. But it's this right. this big. Right. Um, oh, nobody said it. All right. <laughs> That's um, what she said. Thank you. <laughs> this is I'm, nice. I was trying. It's to not slow to focus. Either. Yeah. No, it's quick. no, no. It has to be fast to focus because it's a little tiny thing. Yeah. That little tiny lens is nice and quick. Yeah, I mean, forty millimeter prime lens. It's sharp. It's way sharper than their silly fifty one point eight. So. Well, I thought that was the best lens ever. No. It's I heard that got was a like, very good price to usage ratio, but it's not. Mm. I was watching I was watching a video where somebody like they just ignored the fact that the Nikon has the fifty one point eight G, like the hundred dollar mm. oh, one. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, Nikon doesn't have an op- option for this. Like because it's fifty eight instead of fifty. No, it's a fifty one. Oh, the old fifty? Yeah. Because they replaced it's that a with a fifty eight. No, they have a fifty they have a fifty one point eight um Next one up, which is like two hundred and something dollars, two hundred fourteen, right. whatever it is, the fifty. Two nineteen. Yeah. Um, hey, we'll get all our prices right. Two nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. <laughs> so you better, you better know what they're. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so yeah. We'll get all our prices right this um, time now. <laughs> but they, I mean, they still make the hundred millimeter. I mean, the, the fifty mil one point eight. The D or the G? The G has the motor. The D doesn't. The D is the the metal one, the older one, with the aperture ring. The D, yes, that would that would be the D. Yeah, which works on everything but thirty two hundred. Yeah, it does. It works on. It doesn't work on the three thousand or the five thousand series. So okay. seven thousand and up that has the built-in motor. Because I, I bought that back for the D ninety, which the D ninety has the motor. It's like everything had it up. Yeah, everything so. had it up to the three thousand, five thousand series, and then 
Mm. Except for the 60, the, the 60, 40 ones were terrible. Right. But nobody, those are terrible cameras. The D40 was actually my first camera before I got a Rebel. That's and why you went Canon. And that's why I went Canon. That's the Canon, worst Nikon camera broke. ever made. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm not going to get another Nikon because my yeah. that one broke. So I'm going to go with Canon. My father, my father started with a D50, which I used for a while, and then I went to a D90. And those are both very good cameras. Yeah. The D40 and the 60 were terrible mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Something broke, and I brought it to some repair shop, and they're like, man, just throw it out. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So then I got a T2i and now I'm here. Yeah, my T2i sitting right there. <laughs> recording Ryan. So I had, when I was buying my first SLR, it was... From Humps? No. <laughs> no, I didn't do my first SLR from Humps. It was, I had very little money to spend and it was either, I ended up with, I think it was a T3 at the time. T3i was $800, something like that at the time. That the T3i would have been that, could have been that. Could yeah. have been that yeah. Or it was the D9, I think, was the, or is that the 2i? Two, two no, it would have been, it would have been like T2i and like the 3000. So when I, when I was either the D90 or whatever the Canon was, that was the, there was a new Canon coming out, I think it was the T2i. I don't know. Possible. Yeah, it'd be about the same age, um, so. But it was like, the D90 was $1,000 for the kit, and the Canon was the cheaper option. Yeah. So I had somebody, some family members gave me like $300 or something, mm -hmm. and I just like, like ran yeah. So I ended up with the D90, which was really, and now that was a very good. And now you're here. The D90 with the 18-105 VR, that was a good lens for a DX their camera. New, their new 18-140 to 140 is actually really nice. Their new kit yeah, lens that they're, that they're packaging it with, yeah. which is nice. I mean, Canon's 18-135 to 135 is, is really sharp, but the 18-55 to 55s in both brands kind of. Yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah. Kind of. So yeah, uh, the the second one that I bought was the seventy to three hundred VR two, the the five. It's a good one. That's a very good lens for the money. Mm -hmm. um, and that's I went directly from that to the seventy to 200, 2. 2. 8. 8. Well, you know, that's, not everybody's that lucky. But. Well, I bought it from you guys used um, without the little tripod foot, right. which makes it fun. Oh um, yeah, I handled that. But that's for me. It was looking at those old pictures. Those are still very good pictures, which is why I like to look at the one fifty to six hundred. Mm. Because I feel like the 150 to 600 at even its long range is going to be almost as good as that 70 to 300 was. The 150 to 600 I got to use, and I really liked it for the weight. Obviously, I'm not the most muscular person in the world, so you know, walking around hand holding it was actually the pictures actually came out a lot better than I was expecting. So that's nice. The vibration reduction obviously does its job. Um, you know, so I went out to. Um, trust them pond where there's birds and frogs and all that and I, I mean I was really happy with the results I think you know it's its strongest point is from like one 150 to 300 which for most you know lenses with that much range you're not going to get you know complete sharpness throughout the whole thing that's going to be perfect so um, but all the way out at 600 was not bad at all so you know for the price it's like 1049 oh hi. hey it's a cat so for 1049 and the range that you get compared to, you know, any of the other, you know, although I'm not sure how much the 150 to 500 is, I forget, but um, it it's really nice, and the build quality feels really good too. So yeah, I was, was, I was happy with the it. build quality of their new their new series are so much different than mm -hmm. the old ones. Yeah, we both have the EXDG 2470s. Yeah, which are very good. They're very right. good for what they are. But the build quality of they changed so many things going into the art series. Yeah, and Sigma and Tamron really are kind of stepping it up as yeah, far as that goes. Sigma, Sigma is really coming out with those new their contemporary and their art series lenses are are really good. Have so, you guys used those at all? Yes, I've I've used the twenty four one hundred five art. It's not I, mine. I yeah. would never buy that lens. But yeah. having having picked it up and used it, it's very yeah. very bulky. It's yeah. very rigid. Um, it's not. It's better than its competitors, but it's still it's yeah. a twenty-four to one hundred five. Right. It yeah. It's like Canon's kit lens. Yeah. Yeah. But um. Yeah, their thirty-five and their fifty are really nice. The only thing is, we've actually had somebody return or exchange their thirty-five one point four today for back focusing issues. So if there's one thing that's hmm. been happening with Sigma, it's been those back focusing issues, and then. Um, I don't know if you read Sigma's coming out with a one their own one fifty to six hundred. They're coming out with two versions of it, like a, yeah, a yeah. pro and then the sports version. So I'm really interested to see that compared to the one fifty to six hundred from Tamron. So. Right. Yeah. 
going to sit here and, and play nice today? I mean, other than that. Yeah, because when you, when you talk about the art, I mean, like, you really want attention today, don't you? Um, I've been looking forward to getting my hands on the 85 Mega Gear. Mm. Although there isn't an 85 art, and it's not going to be for a while, at the very least, because they haven't said anything about it. Yeah. Even the one they just released, it just looks so nice. Yeah, they do actually look. And good. and I don't have to spend the two grand plus on a Canon One Two. Right. Oh, the Canon One Two is so nice. Yeah, so. I want it, but it's a little out of the price range. Yeah, I would I would agree. And that's how I feel about the One Fifty to Six Hundred. Is that okay? You can get the Canon One Hundred to Four Hundred. You can get um, what does Nikon have that's comparable to that? I mean, the seventy to three hundred, and then I don't know what the next zoom is. They don't do a lot of kind of mid-range telephoto zooms like that. Or yeah. I mean, they're still high end, but right. I mean, um, they have a straight six hundred millimeter. Well, yeah, they, I mean, that's they have like the, six they, grand. They, well, they have the four hundred four, four hundred two eight, five hundred four, five hundred. They have eight, a yeah. They like, do the straights like for you know we have a three hundred in the store right now, which is like really odd. Yeah, the little three hundred two eight is a really nice thing. Yeah. Um, Jared Mullins did a good video with the three hundred two eight. Photos from it. Yep. He's he's funny. I've never actually watched any of his videos. We can talk about him all the time. But you, I should, you should watch it. He, he's really funny. My, my Phonos photo sticker is above my desk. I know. Right I saw that when I There's saw the one that. There. Yeah, when I bought my, yeah. my black rapid strap, the uh, the Phonos photo one, we had it on sale. Yeah. Because it was actually cheaper than the black rapid was even selling mm. at that point. Um, plus, it's obnoxiously red, which is just so much fun. Um, Especially when you shoot camera. Yeah. Does he shoot camera? Or not camera? He shoots that guy. Stephen Eckert, his, his uh, associate, shoots camera. They, they go back and forth about it, just like we do. I mean, it's really one of those things. People come in and they're like, oh, well, which one's better? Like, you know, Canon or Nikon, it's like, well, do you like Pepsi or do you like Coke? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's not yeah, something that's necessarily a better here. Yeah. So it's it's kind of a... Yeah. And that's one of those things we, we rip on each other, but... It, honestly, that's all we do. And the, the worst part yeah, about yeah. it is that it changes so much over five years that... Oh yeah, because when I when I bought into the Nikon line, Nikon was more expensive. The Nikon was significantly more expensive because DSLR video wasn't a thing. Mm. When DSLR yeah, video wasn't put a it thing, in first. yeah, yeah, D90 was the first camera with DSLR video. Mm -hmm. When DSLR video was not a thing, Nikon, they, the lenses are engineered and they're more expensive. The lenses are generally more expensive, and the, the bodies are more. The, everything was more expensive when I bought into the system. Yeah. Now with Every third party cinematography gear, every third like black magic red, there's so much cinematography equipment that runs off Canon mounts. Right. Everything is really, really expensive. Mm -hmm. Even you I mean, used Canon equipment is so expensive right now. Yeah, yeah, we um we take in a lot more Nikon stuff than Canon. I mean yeah. for Canon it's video is their main thing. If you're gonna do video then you should go with a Canon. Like Nikon put video in their cameras first. Uh, which is cool, but Canon has been doing a really super high-end video for a long time, yeah. and now they're putting it into their consumer stuff. So like their STM lenses, the 70D, um, I think that's that's a really big thing. And it depends what you're doing. Is a lot of it. It's like yeah, I don't do any video, so I don't the care. So the 810 is a very very good at video DSLR. Yeah, it's if not really the best DSLR standalone video yeah. that's not a cinematography piece of equipment mm. where like the 1DC the you know yeah if the D810 is some of the best video you can get in a DSLR yeah but Canon has the offerings of the 1DC and the 4K right and like but they're ridiculous yeah, they're, they're $10,000 cinema line they're $10,000 yeah. it just starts at $10,000 congratulations it's just right. very yeah. very expensive right that's your down payment on a house oh yeah you it's just a car congratulations spend, yeah. a car exactly are you looking at which which lens? Yeah, I was, I was curious because I, I remember that there was one I can't remember the exact um, specs of. The big thing though that's coming into uh, like people are coming in more and more is um, the Panasonic, the GH three and the GH yeah. four are really doing, and they even came out with the um, uh, what is it? It's like a I think it's FZ one thousand. Yeah. Yep. Have you guys seen that? Uh, only yeah. online. I yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you should come in because it the focusing. I've never seen a camera focus so fast and so silently, like oh, in wow. my life. That's that's really what it's amazing. That's what it's really really nice. Like you wouldn't think that Panasonic would be like a big contender, but you know, and the four K video is really up and coming, and they kind of put it into a more consumer level camera. 
yeah, that has nice. a great lens, a 2.8 lens, and the 4K video, and an amazingly fast focusing. Um, yeah, I'll have to come in and play with that. I'm curious. Yeah, the Panasonic rep came in and, and showed us you know, how good even just the stills look from pulling them out of the video, mm. which usually look like crap. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it's, well, they did a really good job with that camera. So Nikon. Look, Elliot loves Canon. He does. Yeah, he can knock that off the table all you want. No. Um, <laughs> he loves it. So Nikon does the 80 to 400. 80 to 400. 80, that's what it is. That's what it is. 80 to 400, uh, 4556 five, EDVR is a newer one, the slightly older one. But how much is that 80 to 400 though? Uh, the, the higher end one is 27. Which, I, which I guess is comparable um, to the Canon, I think. Yeah, this is, the older one is nineteen hundred dollars retail, which I'm sure mm -hmm. you can find a used one of that. But um, the the big ones, the two hundred to four hundred f four, that's the one you hear a lot of mm. from them. That's the VR two is new. It's like seven thousand dollars, but that lens is chump change. On well, that, things, well, that's right? the thing compared to the four hundred millimeter prime, which is ten thousand dollars. Like yeah, you can do the two hundred four hundred zoom and get away with that, and it's very good. That's I've you hear a lot about the two hundred four hundred. For some reason, um, yeah, it's such a it's kind of like a weird range. It is. I I get it though, because you can you can teleconvert it to, to like to be. Yeah. You love your teleconverters. teleconverters. You can. Yeah. You can. That's the thing. I don't I don't own one. I've never owned a teleconverter. I rented one for a little while just to see yeah. how the two X teleconverter was, but. I don't. I don't think I've ever used one besides in the store. I was surprised how good the two X teleconverter actually was for Nikon. I've heard good things about you them. You hear, oh, I mean, you hear terrible things about 2X teleconverters, that they're just awful and the pictures are basically useless. Yeah. They're not. The, the, the pictures were as sharp as the 70 to 300, 4, 5, 5, 6. There you go. And that's at 400, 400, 5, 6 at that point. At I mean, it's one of those things, like, you know, you can get, there are some things where it's like, okay, you know, Nikon, Canon, or like, say, Tamron or anything like that. Everybody has their strengths and their weaknesses, but... As far as teleconverters go, like you know, you you're putting an actual glass in there. You have to get something that's quality. Yeah. Like we sell the ProMaster version of them, and they're not that wonderful. You no. know what I mean? So you can, it's like you're like, well, this is terrible. It's like, well, you paid half the price. Yes. Yeah. With some things like you know, Tamron's twenty four to seventy, Tamron seventy to two hundred, two point eight, almost as good as Canon and Nikon's. You know what yeah. I mean? But, I mean um, that was that was my consideration when I bought the, the Tamron 20, yeah. the 7200 yeah, we, was... We saw a lot like, of those. It's like 90% of the... More than 90. It's more than 90. It's, like it's 95 sharp, of the of the quality and like 60% of the price. No, it's as yeah. sharp or sharper than the Canon. It's it's more often not sharper than the Canon. It yeah. may focus a little bit slower and the, I mean, the contrast is probably a little bit less. Yeah. But those aspects are really... Minimal. Not anything. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly Whereas, right. I mean, it's... <laughs> that that 7200 is as sharp or sharper than the Nikon. Even the new, the new Nikon. Which is saying something, because that's very, very, very sharp lens. Yeah. I described um, it to a customer, they're like, well, how close would you say it is? I'm like, it's like two hairs away. I mean, it's good. Yeah. It's really close. Yeah, it's, it's... Two Elliot furs. <laughs> the, so the, the big one it was the 400mm 2.8 update. That's the one that's like the one that, if I was just going to pick a lens out of a room. So what did you, so you just did one lap around the pond with a 150? Yeah, the, the rep came in and was like, oh, if you ever want to rent, you know, borrow any lenses, let me know. And I'm like, well, one day I want to rent, you know, borrow that 150 to 600. And she's like, well, I have it in the car. I'm like, okay. You're like, are you serious right now? <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah, I just went to, down to Trustman Pond in North Kingstown and used it. And, I mean, we went for like three a three-mile walk, like around. There's like Osprey out there. Um, lots of different birds. There's a little pond where I saw the frogs and um, dragonflies. So it was pretty good. And I mean, all I, I had my monopod. So I mean, it wasn't bad. But I mean, even hand holding it was not, you know, just like holding it up if I was pointing it up at a bird or something instead of using my monopod. It wasn't that bad at all. What's and the I'm weak. <laughs> What's the focusing distance on that one? Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Like the minimum focusing distance, I mean, 150, I don't know. It's probably, what, at least eight feet. Yeah, feet. I was going to say, it's not, um, it's pretty far. <laughs> yeah, that, that's one of the, the really funny things about those lenses is 
the focusing, like the minimum focusing distance, especially the primes. Mm. I've, I've watched people get have to take their prime off their camera because something came too close to them. Yeah. It's really funny. That's yeah. where I could see I could having the 150 to 600 because you actually have the ability to zoom way back out. Right. Um, was that the moose thing? Yeah. That was that was the <laughs> moose thing where it's like, and so the very closest the, the moose got, he was inside. Um, oh, look how much he likes it. <laughs> Bye. He's totally, he's totally a cannon boy. Okay. A cannon fan boy. High five. You want another one? Oh, he'll play with you all day. I'm going to say, you better keep this footage in. Oh, no, don't knock it off. <laughs> right? Oh, no. No, uh, Elliot. You're done. You're done. Oh. Good play. Good. All right. But, yeah, so anyways, kittens and cameras. Yeah. My two favorite things <laughs> in the whole entire world. Right here. So, um, yeah. I love the, I love the picture you put up of the 150 on your SL1. Right? Can we please cue that picture I'll, in I'll put here? That, I'll put that up in post. Because I thought it was your 6D that was yeah. on it when, you, when I first looked at the picture. Right. And so I'm like, and the 6D is significantly larger than the SL1. Yeah. So I was like, like, that thing is huge. And then I looked at the captions. I'm like, that's on my SL1. And I was yeah. like, oh, okay. Yep. No, it's huge. I mean, and on this, I put it on this so it would give me the extra, um, you know, 1.6 or whatever. Um, so it, it was actually really nice. <gasps> I know. I feel a lot. I felt really special <laughs> because our Canon rep came in and he's really awesome. And he there's there was only like six in the country, two two in the west, two in the Midwest, and then two over here. <laughs> so he had it for a couple days and he came down and brought it so we could see it. And I'm like, yes. You know what I mean? It doesn't look any different than the, than the 70. No. There's a little extra button to switch between the focusing modes, which I thought was actually really cool. Um, different than they have on any of their other cameras. Um, but I mean, the the sound of that 10 frames per second is just like a machine gun. Mm. I mean, it sounds like, you know, the D4 or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it was, um, I recorded that sound and sent it to my dad. <laughs> I was like, do you need this right now? That was the first thing I saw, the, the 1DX, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, 1DX, was, 1DS, 4DS, Well, it's the one x and the 1DX. Yeah, it's um, confusing. It was just like, it, it was a Chinese video of no no lens on, just the mirror mm, flapping up and yeah. down. I was like, ah. Uh, All right. Oh my God. Exactly. No, so I mean, is... he had the... Um, he also had the GX7, which is their new, competing with the RX100, which is an awesome camera, by the way. All of the uh, memory card battery doors were closed, or the memory card doors were closed. So, you know, you, he's gonna get in trouble if you let you take the memory card out and take some people at it before people they're actually releasing the stores. You know, I was like, mm -hmm. why is there tape on this? Like, why can't I see the memory card slots? And he's mm -hmm. like, because I will kill you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I get it. So, yeah, so it was kind of cool, you know, I got the intel on it, so. Nice. They'll be out soon and everybody yeah. will be like, this is old news, but. Like, yeah, it's a camera. And Yay. It, was, it, it doesn't look any different. <laughs> Yay. It's slightly faster. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it, it seemed pretty cool. I just, I didn't really play with it seriously. I just yeah. ripped out the shot. <laughs> but it's very cool. Huh? So. It's. It's funny to see that. I mean, that's that's a very good camera, mm. and it's funny to see that crop frame cameras getting all that attention. Yeah. You know, it's because they haven't had a big, like, breaking update of their full frame stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Even it's the six is kind of like it's nice. It's a very good camera, but it's not like yeah. oh my god, look at what they did. It's yeah. They kind of took this camera they've had and they sort of changed it and yeah, they sold it again. And that's the thing, it's like, you know, you talk all day about cameras and everything, but in the end, you just need to know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah that's... You know, but it's like, people want to come in and like, oh, well, how come Canon didn't do this? And why didn't Nikon put this on there? You know, like, why didn't they do this? Why didn't they do that? And I'm like, I don't have an answer for you, and I feel bad for you because you're searching for the perfect camera, and it's never going to be made. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's... It's, it's tough, and I mean, I finally settled on the 6D when it came out because it was smaller, it was lighter, lower price point, still full frame, you know, upgrading from my T2i, but, you know, in the end, if I had gone with a, a 70D or 7D, you know, I still would have been happy. Yeah. I think it's just, it's one of those things where it's, it's all about the gear, which I don't mind, that's why I'm here, right? Yeah. 
but <laughs> and why where I work at my work, but it's um yeah sometimes it's just the the splitting hairs between different cameras and oh, yeah. all of that can just drive you up a wall. See, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a techie person. I I, yeah. I do enjoy talking about the technical details of a camera. It has oh, nothing, oh, absolutely. It has nothing to do with photography. Yeah. They're, right. all, they're all SLR. And I think they're some, all digital SLR. Congratulations. Like, there's not... People don't realize that it's two different things. It's you're like the camera and the gear and the, the electronics and the technology and you, you know, and there's a whole photography aspect of it. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's, it's when you have both that you're an awesome photographer. It's people spend so much time They'll, they'll do all the research and they'll spend a lot of time in the environment of the gear mm. where you need to be spending time in the environment of what's the latest gear as well as what people are doing with it. Right. You know, there's as much content about what people are doing with technology mm -hmm. oh, yeah. as the technology itself. And people don't, don't talk about that. Yeah. They don't talk about what this guy is doing with this mm -hmm. Sony, you know, the Sony camera that's right, under right. the moonlight. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of very interesting, interesting things people are doing that don't, not everybody knows about. Everybody right. knows about the 70 Mark II. Right. Oh my God, the guy with the soccer ball in 10 frames a second. And mm -hmm. shit. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to shoot at 10 frames a second? Yeah, right. Even the guy juggling a soccer that? ball. Yeah. I mean, you're you're going to shoot sports, <laughs> mm -hmm. a wedding, oh, or some random other thing. A kid bad. running around, a, a puppy running around. running around. How are you going to do that in a way that anybody gives a flying fuck, to be honest? It'll let you do the same thing you've been able to do the entire way yeah. a little bit better. Right. If you're doing it, terribly to begin with it doesn't mean it doesn't thing. matter and that's the yeah. thing people come in they're like what's the best camera you have and it's like well yeah, it could be the you know the d4 <laughs> i have under the counter for six grand but if you're not shooting sports or know what you're doing then this camera's going to be useless to you yeah and then they're like oh six grand well i'm looking for something reasonable it's like okay well What's reasonable to you? You know what yeah. I mean? Because we have customers come in and, you know, four grand and six grand is reasonable to them. You know, and they're like, no, we're actually looking for something for like $500. And it's like, okay, well, you're going to get a T5 or a 3200. Yeah. yeah. So, but regardless, if you're good at photography, you're going to be fine with either one. Yeah. So, you know, at the end yeah. of the day. Yeah, because if I walk in and say, I want something reasonable, for me, reasonable is 2K. It, right. It's, I've got no problem dropping 2000 on a camera body. Like, not right now. I'm so I'm me. Not, I mean, that's, and I would never look for something reasonable is the issue. Is I'm looking for what I need to do yeah. with my job. Or economical you know? is another word. It's, I'm looking for something economical. That I mean, that made a huge difference when I was a Here's a point with you. Right. Yeah. So wait, wait. Economical? Do you have an iPhone? Here you go. The yeah. iPhone costs more than the friggin' camera is the yeah. issue. Yeah. Um, but you have an iPhone. Wait, wait. wait. There's your camera. That's yeah. the one thing I really enjoy about the 600, 610 thing, mm -hmm. is that the 600 is a really good camera. Yeah. And it's cheap as dirt to get into the full frame, yeah. good sensor. Yeah, that's how I felt about the 60. You have to buy some, well, and the 600, because it's discontinued, yeah. is like this whole yeah. other level yeah. of being, yeah. it's like $1,500 a mm -hmm. piece. And for $1,500, that's a, an amazing camera yeah. that you can do anything with. You right. can do anything with that camera. If it's feasible right. to be done in photography, you can mm -hmm. do it with that camera. Yeah. If you don't need to shoot past thirty two hundred for right. almost anything ever. Yeah. If you have I mean if you have the glass, that's the big part of that is and that's supported by use Nikon stuff. What's he talking about? I, I, I my, my camera are like around five thousand. Oh, well, it's still possible. You know? I, I, so I shot but the 60 can do 4,000, 5,000. So can mine. So, I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't shoot that high. Yeah, I never shoot that high. I've always been afraid to, with like since I've used my T2i for so long. I like, I'm, oh. I'm afraid to go over 6,400. It's going to look terrible. I would never it's go like, over 6,400. See, I don't go over 3,200. Yeah. I just, it's it's not good anymore, really. Yeah. It's tough. See, it's, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't take my 2i over 800 unless I absolutely have to. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I, no way. But, but no the way. six, I've got absolutely no problem running up to five thousand. Anything over yeah. five thousand, you hit sixty four hundred, it's a little iffy. Well, you know, great is artsy now, so it's yeah. Fun. And when you're shooting concerts, <laughs> concerts, it makes sense. Concerts is fine because it's dark. You you don't have very good lighting to start with, right. and it can be grainy, and no one cares. Right. Like even if you blow it up and it's grainy, you're still like, oh yeah, it's grainy. So yeah. I've never had anyone complain about a concert photo shot at five thousand. But yeah. normally, no, I wouldn't. I have a hard time past 3200 because I see the sharpness just kind of go away and that just kind of hurts me in a weird yeah, way. Yeah, I'm such a stickler for sharpness. Like 3200, past, past 3200, I just, I don't quite want those pictures around. Yeah. 
I yeah. even thirty two hundred, I have a hard time. Like I know they're good. Mm. I just have to work with them a little bit to make them good. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I don't see that as readily as I see it under two K. Yeah. Um, it's just a weird. It's a it's a thing of shooting weddings that I don't, I don't shoot over two thousand unless I have to. Yeah. Have to have to have to shoot over two thousand. But you're really good with flash too. So. That's the thing. It's. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a speed light photographer. You are. Time, so it's. I yeah. shoot, I mean, I'm in a church. I can shoot a 2,000, yeah. 70 to 200 handheld and make some really nice images yeah. with the, just available light. Right. You know, it's you almost very seldom we need to go past 2,000 in a wedding. Yeah. I don't see any use for the 150 to 600 in any environment other than the woods and a soccer field. Oh, absolutely. I, I, why would I use it inside? Why would I, why would I use it anywhere inside? Oh, I want to see what you're doing across the street over there and be a little peek and sound less weird. But I think that's the only reason. I, I, I can see I could see using a 300 millimeter in a church. You know, that's a thing. Well, yeah, there, I mean, I guess that's, things, you're like, shooting down the aisle, but to bring it up, you're like, well, I have this 150 to 600. I mean, I, I guess in certain <laughs> situations, if you can't get that close, maybe, but... I, I don't I see it as marketed as a sports in a while and not even necessarily a sports. Sports I always think of two eight. I think a more wildlife because it's bright and sunny out. But I guess you could say the same about sports. So well, it's, yeah. it's a toss yeah, up. Sports I mean, are generally really well lit unless you're shooting like someone's softball, softball game or most football games now. Basketball in the inside. Of football. There's like I, any time I've ever thought about shooting a shooting a football game for like a newspaper or anything. Mm. It's nighttime now. Congratulations. Yeah, like yeah. deal with it. And that was impossible in the D90. Like, I had my 7300 at, at 4 or 5. You can't shoot a night football game almost. Yeah, it's no. very, no, even under the big it. lights, it's not very good. That's cool. Well, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, it was great having you here. Thank you for coming over. Anytime and you want to talk about cameras. <laughs> well, we do it quite a I bit. I am so. here. <laughs> All right. Sweet. Well, we'll get you back in here definitely from time to time. I want to talk about wildlife. I mean, we want to do some wildlife stuff at some point. Well, we'll make that. Yeah, we can do that. We'll, we'll make a whole episode just. I want to do yellow stuff. You can show my yellow stuff images. Oh, absolutely then. Like, yeah, good, we'll, we'll, I, I really want to do Yellowstone. It's, oh, it's, it's so awesome. I'm sure. It it's is. funny because I lived in Wyoming for like three years and I still never went to Yellowstone. What's wrong with you? I was in Laramie, which is a 12-hour drive away. Oh, I forgot the states are big out there. <laughs> the here. states are huge. You're like, oh yeah, Yellowstone. It's just the other corner of the state, and you're like, yeah, that's like a 12-hour drive. Can do that also, baby. There you go. She can make it down to the second. <laughs> All right. Before Elliot starts calling people, we're going to break this off. We'll see you later. Peace. All right. I got to go. Luckily, we only did ever do one take. And if it's horrible, I got so far. Okay, Wait, cool. You can, you, can, you can do takes more than once. <laughs> we could, but we never do. Yeah. <laughs> that would defeat the whole point of it. It would defeat the whole point of me editing it because I would just be like, fuck this, I'm taking the first take.